Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, wow, what a morning to wake up to the news to. Uh, I don't know if you guys wake up and read the news right away like I do, but um, if you do, it was quite a thing to wake up to. Um, so yesterday I was up very late because I was um, reading about the uh, Twitter executive order from President Trump and uh, the protests in Minneapolis and Austin and no, not Austin, Phoenix and um, uh, LA. I know there were some protests and Louisville. And I was sort of in my head thinking about what we were going to do today. And then I woke up to even more news. So that decided, that made my mind up. Um, so today I'm really going to, uh, so we're not talking at all about coronavirus. Um, this is a, you know, this is a new, a new news cycle. Um, so what I want you to uh, keep in mind and think about uh, is we're going to, I'm going to have you read an article about what happens this morning to the CNN camera crew, which if you don't know about it yet, you will know about it soon. Um, but I want you to also keep in mind while we're reading this, the, um, the idea of President Trump and his tweets being blocked by Twitter, because it, uh, also some tweets of President Trump's were blocked by Twitter in regards to the George Floyd, um, George Floyd, George Lloyd, George Lloyd, um, uh, situation. So anyway, this is a lot and it, it all comes back to the Bill of Rights, which we learned about in the first quarter, second quarter. So we're going to be all tying that back into the second quarter. Okay. So in case you don't know, because you are in seventh grade and there's a lot going on in the world, um, what happened with uh, George Floyd? Is it Floyd or Lloyd? Good God. I'm going to pause for a second and go make sure I get this right. It is Floyd. I apologize to the memory of George Floyd for getting his name wrong. Um, okay, so uh, George Floyd was, um, he was uh, accused. I, I'm, I'm, I can't find anything that um, points to whether or not people think he did use the contra contrafit bill. I, I don't know about that. It doesn't really matter. Um, context of everything that happened because uh, we live in a country where you are innocent until proven guilty um, and using counterfeit money is a nonviolent crime so if a person were to use a nonviolent crime uh, it would still be inappropriate for them to die at the hands of an officer as long as they were not resisting arrest or doing other violent things but he the police were called because uh, individual was using trying to use a counterfeit $20 bill which is be a fake $20 bill um, video surveillance shows George Floyd I have not watched the video of his death I have no interest in doing that but I did watch a little bit of the video before um, he was arrested and and you can see him cooperating with the police in that video so from what I've seen with my own eyes and from what all media sources are saying, he cooperated with the police, was led over by the um, police cruiser, and then for some reason, which I am unclear about this still, he, the police officer put him on the ground and put his knee on his throat and held him down with his knee on his throat until he died. Um, and this sparked immense outrage in um, the world, I would say, um, you know, uh, the Twin Cities and other cities and also the world at large um, about police brutality. For a while, it seems like maybe the police were trying to cover it up because they said something about medical, um, I forget the phrasing they used, but they, they said that uh, he was under medical duress when at the time of his arrest, um, or he died in custody. That's what they said. And people had a lot of issue with that phrasing because it implies, it doesn't imply blame on the part of the police officer. Uh, but the video existed. People were seeing it, it have been condemned. Uh, the actions have been condemned pretty much across the board. Um, other police chiefs, the mayor of Minneapolis, even, even President Trump has condemned um, the actions of the police officer. So it's pretty much a universally agreed fact that what happened should not have happened, that that police officer was acting inappropriately. Um, so the police officer and the other three officers that were at this scene have been fired. Um, so 
there were three other officers there that were holding back the crowd that did not stop the police officer who killed George Floyd. So they've all been fired, but people are very much wanting there to be criminal charges because they feel that he was, um, you know, he was murdered and that the, that the police officer who killed him should uh, be held accountable with murder charges and that the other officers should um, be accessories to murder, whatever those kinds of charges would be. Um, so people are very upset that they have not been charged for murder. And I think also the upset comes from it, just the fact that it happened and kind of like it happened again. Um, this is not that we've been down this road before as far as police brutality and race goes. So that's the story. In case you didn't know the story, that's what the story is. Um, this last night marked the third night of protests in Minneapolis that turned violent. So uh, a peaceful protest is when people are out in the streets marching, um, you know, voicing their opinions to the public in a, in a large group. Things turn into the side of like civil uh, disobedience when a group of protesters might like shut down a street or kind of go where they're not supposed to go. This happened during the teacher strike. There are some teachers who entered um, a construction building without permission and sat down. It's called, it's called a sit-in. Uh, they were arrested because they were not, they were asked to leave and they didn't. So, um, you know, protest has always kind of crossed that line of like, legal protest, legal peaceful protest in the street, veering into civil disobedience to make a statement. So that's protest, but then the protests turn violent in the Twin Cities, which is never legal, um, with fires being started, um, glass bottles being thrown from one, that's the, those are the main things from what I've seen. Um, I saw an image of a man jumping on a car. Um, this can be called rioting and it can be called looting. Um, in sort of a regular conversation, or it could be called a violent protest. So this has been happening for the past three nights in the Twin Cities. The National Guard was called in, um, which is pretty standard, I would say. That's not like, that's not a, 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 an odd move that the governor would call, or the mayor would call the National, or the governor calls in National Guard. So the national, this is happening. It's really crazy. P the police station in the neighborhood where George Floyd was killed was um, burned to the ground, I think, last night. I mean, at midnight when I was watching the news, it was pretty seriously burning. Um, many stores were set on fire. Windows were broken. Um, it was it was chaos. It was a it was a chaotic scene of a lot of really angry and upset people um, who were very frustrated and this was the outlet from which they felt they could vent their frustration. So all of that is what happened. And then I'm going to have you read an article about what happened at five o'clock this morning. Um, and because we live in this age of there's everything is recorded and everything's digital and there are cameras everywhere. We get to see the whole thing, which is certainly not the norm throughout history, but the CNN camera crew was arrested, uh, seemingly violating several of their, uh, amendment rights. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to watch a video of their arrest. It's uh, interesting. You know, it says warning, this contains explicit and I, maybe I'm just old and have old ears, but I did not hear, I didn't hear the explicit. So I, I'm, I'm having you watch it um, because I didn't really, sorry, always managing a puppy or a child guys. Um, I didn't um, notice anything too explicit. So Hopefully, hopefully that <laughs> you guys don't notice anything too explicit either. But there's an article attached to the video, and I'm going to have you watch the video about what happened. Um, it's one of those things that I think is going to go down in history as like, remember that time the CNN camera crew was arrested? Um, so I think it's important to, to watch it. So this is kind of juxtaposed. Oh, juxtapose. There I am using words from your chapter questions. This is juxtaposed with... Um, with another amendment, uh, freedom of speech conversation, as far as Trump's Twitter goes. And I think it's so interesting that we would wake up today and have two sides, um, 
uh, two like just really clear explanations of the, or not explanations, but demonstrations of the difficulty of upholding our constitution in a way that is fair and balanced and, and the right way for the people of this country. So Twitter has recently taken to blocking or flagging Trump's tweets. They seem to be blocked to me, but someone had said that they're not blocked, they're just flagged. And you could still get to them if you wanted. I don't know, I don't know how to use Twitter, so I don't really understand all that. Um, some of the information was misleading information about uh, COVID, and then there was a, Trump, a tweet about um, Minneapolis where Trump said, when the looting starts, the shooting starts which implies violence. So Twitter blocked it as inciting violence, which you can't do according to the Twitter platform. And Trump is, uh, has, si has since signed an executive order against social media to sort of stop, to try to stop them from being able to block, I'm assuming anybody's, but specifically his comments. So we need to get into that. We're not getting into that today. But when you reflect on um, I mean, you can get into it in the comments if, if you want, but when, we, when you reflect on George Floyd, and, and not George Floyd, when you reflect on the CNN reporters getting arrested, and then I think this issue with Trump is also tied into this bigger issue of First Amendment rights. And I think you can also sort of imagine which people in this country would be supportive of Trump's First Amendment rights and maybe not supportive of the CNN camera crews, First Amendment rights, and then vice versa, who in this country is going to support the CNN reporters and perhaps not as much support Trump's rights because I think it'll, it'll follow clearly down partisan lines in a lot of ways. So a ton of stuff happening. I mean, if you are at all interested in the news, today is the day to go read all of, all of these news. It's just really fascinating. Um, so I'm going to post the article that has the video of the CNN reporters being arrested. I'm going to have you reflect on how this violates their Bill of Rights. There's two manners in which their Bill of Rights are violated, and you're going to figure out what they are. Well, one of them I've already said. You're going to figure out the other one. And, um, and then I hope you have a great weekend and that, um, you know, some craziness subsides in the in Minnesota, Minneapolis. It's, I hate to imagine people getting hurt.